Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Tuesday, August the 11th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 26. Then the Ziphites came to Saul at Gebeah, saying, Is not David hiding himself on the hill of Hakalah, which is on the east of Jeshimon? So Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, with three thousand chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul encamped on the hill of Hakalah, which is beside the road on the east of Jeshimon. But David remained in the wilderness. When he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness, David sent out spies and learned that Saul had come. Then David rose and came to the place where Saul had encamped. And David saw the place where Saul lay with Abner the son of Ner, the commander of his army. Saul was lying within the encampment while the army was encamped around him. Then David said to Ahimelech the Hittite and to Joab's brother Abishai the son of Zeruiah, who will go down with me into the camp to Saul? And Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there lay Saul sleeping within the encampment, with his spear stuck in the ground at his head, and Abner and the army lay round him. Then said Abishai to David, God has given your enemy into your hand this day. Now please let me pin him to the earth with one stroke of the spear, and I will not strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can put out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? And David said, As the Lord lives, the Lord will strike him, or his day will come to die, or he will go down into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should put out my hand against the Lord's anointed. But take now the spear that is at his head in the jar of water and let us go. So David took the spear in the jar of water from Saul's head, and they went away. No man saw it or knew it, nor did any awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood far off on the top of the hill with a great space between them. And David called to the army and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Will you not answer, Abner? Then Abner answered, Who are you who calls to the king? And David said to Abner, Are you not a man who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not kept watch over your lord the king? For one of the people came in to destroy the king your lord. This thing that you have done is not good. As the lord lives, you deserve to die, because you have not kept watch over your lord, the lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is in the jar of water that was at his head. Saul recognized David's voice and said, Is that your voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Why does my lord pursue after his servant? What have I done? What evil is on my hands? Now therefore, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If it is the lord who has stirred you up against me, may he accept an offering. But if it is men, may they be cursed before the lord. For they have driven me out this day, that I should have no share in the heritage of the lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Now therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth away from the presence of the Lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a single flea, like one who hunts a partridge in the mountains. 
Then Saul said, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do you harm, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Behold, I have acted foolishly, and have made a great mistake. And David answered and said, Here is the spear, O king. Let one of the young men come over and take it. The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, and I would not put out my hand against the Lord's anointed. Behold, as your life was precious this day in my sight, so may my life be precious in the sight of the Lord, and may he deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be you, my son David. You will do many things and will succeed in them. So David went his way, and Saul returned to his place. Our writing this morning is from the Enchiridion of Martin Chemnitz. Uh, Martin Chemnitz, if you don't know, was a uh, theologian that came in the generation after Martin Luther. In fact, in Reformation studies, they often say if Martin Chemnitz had not come along, uh, the teachings of the first Martin, Martin Luther, would not have survived. Uh, at Luther's death, the Lutheran Church was in a little bit of turmoil, possibly an understatement. And uh, Martin Chemnitz stayed uh, steadfast in the faith. He wrote the Formula of Concord. And he also kept uh, Philip Melanchthon, Luther's sidekick, uh, kind of in check because Philip Melanchthon wanted to get along with everybody at the cost of pure doctrine. And so Martin Chemnitz was able to rein him in and keep him on the path. Uh, Enchiridion is just another word for uh, like a catechism. And the reading today is about uh, the gospel. The gospel is properly the doctrine of the person in office or benefits of Christ. But this doctrine consists most of all in these chief parts, that the Son of God before the world of time was, by a wonderful decree made in the hidden council of the Trinity, appointed to be our mediator, redeemer, reconciler, and savior. That this decree was revealed by the word of promise immediately after the fall and the promise of the coming Messiah, gradually renewed and repeated to the fathers during the whole time of the Old Testament. Likewise, that the Son of God, according to the promise, was made man in the fullness of time, and most perfectly completed the work of redemption and reconciliation, by his obedience, passion, and death, and thus gained righteousness and life eternal, by his resurrection and ascension, for those who believe in him. The Gospel does not only set forth the account of Christ in story form, but the proper doctrine of him is the promise of grace by which God in the word and the sacraments sets before and offers to miserable sinners, thoroughly terrified by the knowledge of sins and of divine wrath and damnation, grace, remission of sins, adoption, and the inheritance of life eternal, freely and out of pure mercy or grace, without our merit, only for the sake of the obedience, passion, death, and merit of Christ. The gospel teaches that these benefits of Christ the mediator are to be apprehended and applied by faith. The gospel declares those who believe righteous and saved. We now join in the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. 
For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us, through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs, to be ever watchful of the confession of your Son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace, that we may withstand all trials, and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that, ever mindful of the end of all things and the day of your just judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here, and dwell with you forever hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.